If you look at Representative Bailey's uh, track record in the State House of Representatives, you see a consistent pattern of leadership based on principle. One of the ways you can tell is by looking at the long list of honors that she's received from organizations who spend a lot of time in Olympia. You know, the sheriffs and police chiefs have honored Barbara for her work to support public safety. Uh, she's been honored repeatedly by the National Federation of Independent Business. Uh, Barbara Bailey is a friend of small business in our state. Uh, but more than just understanding their issue, she has been a business owner and understands what it takes to run a small business to be successful in operating a company. And I think that's why NFIB has more than once recognized her as one of the top legislators of the year, as has the Association of Washington Business with their awards. Now, why is that important? It's important because there just aren't enough people in state government today who understand exactly how challenging it is to start a business, grow a business, and employ people in that company. Barbara gets it. She understands that we have one of the highest unemployment rates in America in our state today. Last summer, I think it was June 30th, the federal government reported we had the fifth highest unemployment rate in the country. And I'm not talking about the unemployment rate you hear on the news every Thursday morning when they release the new jobless claims. You know, the one that says uh, 300,000 or 400,000 people have filed new claims for benefits. Then they say the unemployment rate is now 8.5% or 8.3% or 8.2%. That's, that's not the real rate of unemployment. You all know what the real rate is. It's the rate that actually counts people who aren't currently collecting benefits. It counts people who have taken a temporary job or they look for full-time work. It counts people who uh, haven't applied for a job in the last four weeks. That unemployment rate in our state today is about 17%. That's the real rate. I read an article in US News and World Report uh, recently that pointed out that nationally, 25% of households have at least one person in them who are unemployed. That's the rate of unemployment that we all feel, right? Because that's what we see day in and day out. So how do we address that? We address it by moving in the direction that Representative Barbara Bailey and her colleagues in the House and in the Senate have been saying again and again, we need to go in. It's the direction that says we're going to lower the cost of doing business in the state. We're going to reduce the cost of employing people. Because right now, we're one of the most expensive states in the country in which to do business. We have some of the highest costs for workers' comp, for unemployment insurance, we have the only statewide gross receipts tax, the B&O tax. You get to pay whether you're profitable or not. And of course, we have a heavy regulatory burden, a burden that creates uncertainty, that raises the cost of operating a business, and that makes it harder to employ people. I've spoken to hundreds and hundreds of business owners across this state, and every one of them says it's just too expensive to keep people employed around here. The rules are too onerous. I have a friend, her name is Carrie. She lives in Essequah, she runs a small business. She said to me once, you know, it's really a shame that after you start a company and you get to the point where you can hire your first employee so you get some help, she said it's really a shame that the second employee you have to hire is a lawyer. Right? She came back from a seminar that one of the law firms put on with a manual this thick of regulations that she needed to, to know and follow just to have a single employee, much less to add more employees. When you look for solutions to the fact that we're one of the most expensive states in the country in which to do business and employ people, look to Barbara Bailey. Look to her common sense approach to regulatory reform, to tax reform, opening up what the government does to competition, one of the first bills I will introduce as governor is a bill to break the state monopoly over workers' comp and open up options for employees. <laughs> and I'll be looking to leaders in the legislature like Barbara to help move that bill forward. We're one of only four states in the country where the state monopolizes industrial insurance as a workers' comp monopoly. The other area we need to use it is in, is in the provision of state government services. It's already written in the state law that the state can bid out for competitive bidding the services and products that it provides. 
The problem is we've had a couple governors in a row now that have said to the public sector unions, uh, don't worry, we won't actually bid anything out unless you agree to it in advance. <coughs> they don't agree. And consequently, we're missing the opportunity to use competition to get the best deal for taxpayers and for the people who are receiving the services. We need to use what's already on the books, what's already in law, to allow competition to do what competition does best. It drives in innovation, it drives out costs, and you know, governments across the country have figured this out. I read an article a couple of weeks ago about the new mayor of Chicago. You recall, he is not a noted conservative, <laughs> right? Rahm Emanuel. What is he doing? He's opening up city services to competitive bidding. He's putting solid waste out for competitive bidding, for example. In the article I read in the newspaper, in the first 30 days where the solid waste workers were getting ready to have to bid to keep the work, there wasn't a single sick day called out. Yeah? Competition works because it brings out the best in people. We don't get stronger running a race by ourselves. We get stronger in a competitive environment.